the champ select boys alrighty boys so we're gonna be teaching you how to play blue cane only the challenger and we're starting out in silver elo this is a fresh account and we are up against a brand jungle game number one now everything about climbing from iron from bronze from silver from gold Hot, emerald, diamond, master is all going to be the same concept. Fundamentals. We're going to do a full clear. And you're always going to be doing a full clear this game because Kane is one of the champions that can do a full clear very quick, very healthily. I'm going to show you how it's done. Why am I in silver? Because the only way that I can teach people how to climb out of their elo is by playing in their elo. When I play in challenger, I cannot teach you the struggles that you're going to witness and see in your game. Fundamental gaming. Yes, I feel like a Loy right now. A Luis. A Leos. It's Alois. A Lois. <laughs> Get the jungle version. We're going to start blue. Whether you get a leash or not, doesn't matter. So, so you're always going to want to do a full clear to bot lane. That's step number one, I'm going to tell you, boys and girls. Mostly because we're playing blue cane, so you're going to get a lot of blue orbs just path the bot. Playing only blue cane will be a little bit of a challenge, but can be done. Can be done. Okay, so we're going to use our Q. Make sure that you're dragging your camp towards your next camp. So once you see it has 200, so you move it to the next camp like that. Pull up your W immediately, start queuing. And now notice the small things I'm doing with this clear. You can even rewind this if you want. So notice how I'm like moving my camps to my next camps. Like move my Grom to the wolves. And then I'm moving the camp into the wall. That way I can get a faster Q animation so I get more auto attacks. Just look at all the little things I'm utilizing to get a fast, efficient clear. And then very simple, very basic. After that, we'll look for a gank. I'll try not to do anything too confusing so I don't lose you guys. But right now we're going to level up our E. We're going to Q this. Gonna start autoing. Keep autoing. Drag it on down. Use our Q or W. Gonna look bot. Just something real quick. Whether you want to use your function keys or whether you want to, you know, move on over or whether you want to click on the map. And all you're looking for is to see the wave. So seeing the wave is pushed in, you don't want to gank. Or if it's pushed out, then you look for the gank. So right now, I technically could maybe look for the mid gank, but. Tony's not healthy enough is the issue. You always want to finish that full clear though. So we're done with the full clear now. Okay. And we know Brand is down here. So if I... Oh, actually no. That was Morgana that hit the plant. Okay. Maybe I can look for something then. Because I mean, we do have bot prio. I look for the scuttle. Prio basically means that your lanes can move. So if your laner's wave is shoved in, it means that they can move for you. Now see, this looks gankable. But if I'm at bot scuttle, this means Brand would be at top scuttle. Nope. We're going to reset. Look to farm some more. Basically, if you guys just saw my first outing, no gank, no nothing done. That's fine. There wasn't really anywhere that was accessible for a gank. And you always want to make sure that you're resetting around the same time that your camps are respawning. So your camps respawn every 2 minutes, 15 seconds. And there's apps that you could probably download that'll tell you when the camps will respawn. But just try and make sure that you're going to be here around like 425, 420, right? Now I can either look, okay, should we go for the grubs or maybe look for another bot gank? Because I'm so fast and I also know where Grand is, I go look for the grubs. Oh, there he is. No way from to waste his abilities, then we can look for this. No, don't walk into him. Why are you walking into him? Okay, slow them both down. I'll just hit whoever we're not hitting. That's the new starter. I have mastered every weapon of war. No prattling tool will prove an exception. I'll show you how it's done, Renek. Watch this. <laughs> Panic flash. And now because I know Brand is going to look for the objective, there's a very high tempo play you could look for. So if I don't have a winning mid and top, say how Yoni is not winning, I could look to just take one grub and now ignore this objective. As long as it's up, I can just ignore him. I don't have to look for this. If Brand respawns and runs straight to the grubs, he would be able to fight me. So I'm going to avoid that right now. Oh, what? Dude! Dude! What is that? And first item, we're always going to be getting a Yumus. Always prioritize getting your Dirk over the record. Now we can look for our bot side camps. And now after we've done what? This is our second clear, our second outing. Look for ganks over camps. So your first clear, you always want to make sure you do all your camp. But now that I'm on my second outing, I can prioritize ganks over my camps. Right here, I would love to gank. They're in a perfect position, but that's too big of a wave. One, and it's only one person. But if Yoni gets an angle, we could like kind of pinch them here. Here's 
Ooh, the nasty Yoni! And I'm gonna just reset immediately, run straight to my top side, defend those camps. Brand will probably be on the uh, grubs because he wasn't on the bot scuttle. So that's kind of how you always want to track where the enemy Jung is. You want to use process of elimination. If he's not at X, then he must be at Y. So if he's not on dragon or he's not on scuttle, then he must be on grubs. Because I took one grub, the uh, objective is way lower value. Because unless you get six grubs, it's not uh, an amazing objective to be honest. And because I have my ult here, honestly, we can maybe look for a play of the Yasuo. It's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy. Oh, I don't even need to use my ult, actually. Oh. Put a ward on this. Oh, so he took one, too. And I always like to get control wards on the opposite side of the map of where I'm playing. So if I'm playing bot, I'll get a control ward on the top side. If I'm playing top, I'll get a control ward on the bot side. So if I want to play towards bot side, I want to make sure I'm clearing my top side before I do such a thing. That way, I don't have to really worry about getting invaded or anything, you know? And because Mr. Yoni died and he doesn't have TP, I can just look to take this lovely little wave. I'm not trying to take anything too much right now. I'm just farming, being smart, being safe. You can also look for this mid play, yeah, if he wants to, like, full set this in. I usually do like to hold on to my W. It kind of has, like, a gap close, but it's, like, a 1v2. No, he's not going to have the damage to kill us. Make sure I use my ult to dodge his ult. Now I can look for the invade after. So you always want to maximize your gain. So I get a play done, and because the top also died, they have no one that can move on me to stop help me from invading because worst case scenario if brand comes i'm not gonna look to kill him but he can't look to kill me that's kind of the whole ideology with like invading right now right like he can't stop me so i might as well try and see how much can i get and this is where you kind of get in that zone where you're testing your limits like okay can i do this can i do that okay so they both respawn i got three camps i got out i survived you know that grub has no value for me so i'm not even gonna go for it actually i think i'm gonna reset over here because was actually vision there, so I might try and stop my reset. But keep in mind, I have a lot of gold, so looking to fight this with no ulti is kind of dangerous, unless Renekton could just, like, hard 1v9 it. And our second item will usually always be Axiom, because Axiom is very complementary towards Yumu's. There's a Bully Haste, which is very necessary. Do a lower ult CD, which will mean you're getting a lot more plays done, because you played through your CDs in the mid-game. We'll go over that when the mid-game fully strikes, which is usually around, like, all the T1 towers are down. Kill the wave so the tower starts hitting them, and force them to walk to my skill shop. And now we can go look for a bot side invade. Because once again, we're given all this... Wait, what? Uh, no comment. But do you see how jungling is just all about fundamentals? Okay, so we killed two. I have, you know, enough presence to where I can look for this invade. I can just bully this guy. I have a big advantage on him. I'll just go one-shot him. I'm three-level lead, and I have item i could look to like be aggressive she since i have my alt cd so i could look to be more aggressive when i have my ulti right and this is how you want to look to beat people is you want to understand okay in the early game stay safe i get my farm because that guarantees an advantage just from farming you get an advantage from farming i'm not gonna let the guy eat through me so he doesn't have a way to get away now keep in mind i still have my ult so i could still stay on the map and still be aggressive and still look to make plays and there's no point in me farming my own camps when i could farm his camps And now I still have my ulti. I use my flash, but I still have my ulti, so I can stay on the map here. So now I can look for the bot play with my ulti. Because your ulti is really good for tower diving. Cannon wave is the best wave to dive on, because the, the cannon can take so many uh, tower shots. Or it's going to guarantee that my team gets the tower. I'm going to go for the blue. Take everything I can. Nothing else to do here besides the dragon. Dragons are great as a safety net, but typically, if you're not rushing dragons, by the way, I'm going to get my boots right now. You can usually get your boots after either second item or after third item. Most of the time, I do it after my third item, but you can do it after second item, especially if you're this ahead. The more ahead you are, the more mobility will benefit you. If you're behind, then you just want to get your damage. So I just farm, you know, past the time while my ulti is down. Always play for your CDs. Because I have Axiom, my ult CD is going to be very low. Because I'm level 11 fast, because of my pathing, it's also going to be a lower CD. So this is how you snowball. This is what snowballing comes from. And notice they're all around the bot side right now. So I kind of want to match where they're going. So I'm going to probably head down there right now. Unless you're behind, then you can like look at the split or whatnot. There's one. You don't need to be frugal at all with your ulti with this itemization setup, by the way. That's kind of the whole premise of it. Not to be like that. This is when you get into mid game when all the tier one towers are down. That's your main objective. When you're past 12 minutes, your main objective, or I'd say 14 minutes, 14 minutes is getting all the T1 towers. So we got T1 top, we got T1 mid, we got T1 bot. And now because the map is so open, I can look to go into his jungle consistently and look for invades. Oh, and he FF'd. Jeez. Victory. 
Guess who's back? All right, boys. Listen, everything I'm going to teach you guys is going to be the same routine. And this is where those of you that are consistently watching will slowly notice the patterns. If you can follow these patterns, it doesn't matter what your champion is. You will be able to climb way faster because everything that is climbing in the lower ranks is all fundamental. All fundamentals. If you follow these little pointers as a jungler, you will consistently be able to outperform who you're up against. If you can do that, you'll climb. But we're going to start blue and see. Look, notice how I just dragged this camp. The other camp, I'm gonna use my Q here again. And as soon as it hits 200, I smite this camp, auto once, auto twice, get behind it, pull up my W, immediately use it, and I keep this fatty grump on this edge. Then I start moving this out once it's 150, and the pet will kill it after that last auto. And look, I'm not looking at my lanes, I'm not doing anything crazy, all I'm doing is clearing. That's all you do. Literally, that's all you do. Nothing will stop me from doing this clear, nothing. People think it's like something huge or large you need in order to hit like diamond or even master really. Like Twitch chat, would you guys be happy or satisfied for hitting diamond or master? Type 1 if yes, type 2 if no. Because I, hitting diamond and master, you don't need to do anything crazy. It's just do what you do now, but cleaner and smoother. And I'm going to teach you the smoothness of it. So look, they're pushed past this terrain so I can look for the gank. I get an angle behind them. If you're going to gank, you always, always, always look for the angle behind. Geta has more Look access to escaping, game. so I'm gonna go for the Ash instead. Even if she used Chow herself, donated five dollars and forty-two cents. But yeah, see with that gank, I didn't do anything overly crazy. My team didn't really give me the reaction I wanted. It's not your team's fault whenever they do silly things. It's your fault for not adapting to what they're doing. So if they're not giving me the reaction I want, and I notice that, and I immediately say, "Hey, you know what? We got some sums. I got the scuttle. Let's reset. Let's look to regank. Don't do Raptors first anymore. I do in high elo." But you shouldn't, because the way that you play at low elo, it's going to be the same thing over and over and over and over again. That's how you climb out of low elo. League is a graph. And if you play the graph better than they play the graph, I kind of want to look for the scuttle here, but honestly, it's not worth trying to reset my camps. And same thing I said last game. You always want to make sure that you, your first outing, you're not overstaying on the map. Always try to come back to your top side camps as they spawn. So run like 420. Or there's apps, I don't know what they're called, but I'm sure someone in chat might use them and could recommend them or something. But there's apps that will literally tell you when your camps respawn. It'll tell you the respawn timers. You know? So, uh, the, the accessibility to understand this knowledge is out there. Now, I'm going to look for the grubs. And do I have a winning mid? Do I have a winning top? Yes, that means I'm going to look for the grubs. If I don't, then I take one and I run. Alright? I climb from high diamond to master. Same shit. The only time you need to hardcore adjust your playstyle and learn more about the game is when you're approaching GM and Challenger. Son. As someone who's done numerous and numerous, numerous amounts of unranked to Challengers, I can promise you the only shift you're ever going to notice in like playstyles and everything is GM Chow. Everything below is all the same shit. Okay, so we got the grubs, and now I can look to go get my bot side camp. And like I said, I did this last game. After my first clear, my first clear, I'm I'm stuck to my camps. All I'm doing is my camps. But let's say this was gankable right now, I would skip my raptors. Let's say this is gankable, I would skip my raptors. You know? You could be a little bit more active on the map. A little bit more. Because that's the difference between last season and this season. Hey, Karis, my I don't understand. Last season I climbed really good. This season I can. It's because this season is a little bit more proactive. You cannot play as reactive as we used to. What does I can look for this, but this is like, okay, asking my bot lane to dive here is putting faith. This is a good play. This is a good play, right? But it's immediately a bad play when you put too much faith in players that you're not confident in. So this is how you, the player, can rationalize. Okay, I know this play would work, but does my bot lane know how to make the play work? And nine times out of ten, if there's any risk involved, involving or including your teammates, I would say don't go for it. The odds of the play have to be like so incredibly high for me to want to like ever want to do something like that. Like if there's a massive wave crashing, they're both like one hit. Like, you know, basically if I'm in a situation where I can do every single thing to make that play work out, I'll do it. But if I have to rely on anybody for anything, I'm not going to go for it. And then P this is the type of mindset and playstyle you need to adapt. And this will slowly get you out of that mindset of, oh, my team did this, my team did that. Because once you get out of the mindset of my team this, my team that, that's when you start climbing. Because it's like, 
even if you get into the, even if they AFK, even if they troll you, you can't let it get to you. Just queue up another one. If you get trolled and you keep queuing, but you're getting upset over getting trolled, then you're going to be tilted. And if you're entering a new game tilted, you're lowering your odds of winning by like 20%. Oh. So, you can't let anybody affect your mental. It's not just fundamentals, it's... You gotta, you gotta play the mind games. You gotta win the brain games in yourself. Alright, let's just keep farming. But look, this game, 0 KP. This is where I'm sure a lot of you have probably been told, Oh, you know, you should be doing more of this, you should be doing more of that. Kane's AFK, my Kane's not doing anything. There's a difference between not doing anything and not having anything to do. You know what I mean? You shouldn't do something because you feel pressure to do something. You should do something because it's a good thing to do. Like right here, she's low. I could look to be aggressive in her jungler, right? And be like, okay, let's get some vision. That's something. Good all of her bot side. All right, let's get pot scuttle. Let's get dragon. Because the slow victories are very important. They're just as important as the big victories, like getting ganks off and getting kills. I have... All objective control. I have CS lead. Okay, they have no flash. Honestly, I'm going to shove this wave. Remember how I said you shouldn't look for a dive unless you like, have full trust? This is a situation where I have full trust in myself. You probably kill this. Alright, not bad. I mean, Akali wasting time out of lane and not getting anything and using her ulti is really good for us because Ari just gets free plates. That's fine. Yeah, I got orbs. That's the fun thing about Kane taking small little fights like that is the orb value is all there. And I mentioned this last game. If you want to make a play on a certain side of a map, play the opposite side first. Oh, if I'm clearing my bot side, this means I'm going to do what? Shut. Do you notice the patterns I'm talking about? It's all prep. That's what you're missing. That's what you're missing in your gameplay. I'm prepping my next play. This is what GM players lack. Do you believe me if I told you this? If you understand, say the word. It's a small word. It's four letters. Prep. That's all you gotta type. Type, type to yourself right now. Prep. If you can understand the concept of prep, you will be better than literal GM players. Mentally. Because they don't prep their plays. They just make plays. I prep a play, and then I go for it. So I prep my top side play by farming all my bot side camps. Or I prep my top side play, or vice versa. I, pre I prep my bot side play by clearing all my top side first. Or let's say dragon's gonna spawn, and it's a big dragon, 40 seconds before it spawns. I'm reset, I'm getting my items, I'm prepped. See, the thing that a lot, not a lot of people would realize about this situation and the circumstance is that Belveth is one of the, if not the strongest early game champ of the game. And Kane is one of the, if not the weakest early game champ of the game. Because Kane doesn't have a passive. His passive is getting a form, so he's very weak early game. And I have double or CS, and I have full objective. That's why I play the way By I way, do. this was my unironic. Is Rengar good to climb with to diamond? Every high level player will tell you this. Any champ you want to, it's good to climb. Everything that I'm teaching you and I'm showing you right here could also be applied to Rengar as well. Every champ you want to play can be played Tai Elo. Doesn't matter to the champion. I guarantee you that. You can play any champion of the challenge. The easiest way to climb would be abusing meta, but then you're going to be a massive loser. And I don't think any of you are massive losers. Sorry if there's any meta players. The reason why I just ulted immediately is in case he had his E back up. I didn't track his CD too well, so... I like how much gold I have. See how I haven't reset yet? It's because there's still stuff going on in the map. And I know Belveth was bot side, so no one's here to stop me from making plays top side. Right? Alright, so we're gonna go Yumu's, and we're always gonna get Axiom. Itemization is as easy as can get right now, guys. You get Yumu's, you get Axiom, you get Grudge. And then fourth item, if they have shields, you go Serpents. If not, you go uh, Opportunity. And last item, you get GA. Literally the easiest itemization. No cane main right now should be messing up their blue cane itemization. Now keep in mind, there's other items you can go that can work, but this is situationally the best. Like, you should be doing this every game. And if you do this every game, you're going to find success every game. Some games, yeah, would this have been better? Yes, but this will consistently be the best. Okay, see your bot side? This is a vision of the bot side. I'm going to look for a uh, little invade. There's no armor. I have no ulti. I can't do anything too aggressive, but I can look for the smite fight. Ow. Oh! I mean, I got 
four episodes worth. Okay, see how Belvedere's bot side? All these camps don't exist. No, it does exist. Her top side and the objective. Yes. Yes. I want to repeat myself. If the enemy jung is bot side and everything of theirs is up top side, your camps don't exist. Only take their camps. Always prioritize invades and contested camps, you know, etc. And objectives over your own camps. Always, 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 always. Like that's another thing that I see master and GM players do. They won't prioritize punishing over farming their own camps. That's why I say league is a graph because people don't understand. Oh, that's bot. I should go bot. Oh, but that's bot. I'm gonna farm my camps. Oh, you need to think. How can I punish her? In order for her to be equal strengths to me, she needs to get every kill in bot. And unless your team is really newbie, which sometimes happens. And everybody dies to enemy jung will come out very ahead. I got every single camp. I got the rift. If Ash stays up top, I guarantee I'm killing that Ash. Because step one of assassins. If you see an ADC alone in the side lane, you run straight to him. Now she probably gets away. She's probably like, probably gets away. Right? Right, she's not getting away. I know what to do with my gold. A lot of people, they don't know what to do with their gold. Her itemization pretty much makes it so you can play a different way. Every time you get an item spike, you can play a different way. When I have my Axiom, I could use my ult, you know, more crazy like. I have my Grudge, I could kill whoever, whenever. So, going my exact strength with the item for spike is important. That's why getting used to new builds is so important. That's why usually before I play in my Challenger accounts, I always like test out a new build couple games in GM or Master because you want to get fully comfortable with like your limitations of set of build. Right now I'm just farming everything because I mean there's no point in me resetting right? I got my ult coming up I can go use my ult. I can keep invading. Right here I can just... <gasps> I just played W on her. I'm trying to hit Janna. Would I have one shot with that W? I don't know actually. I want to stay in the map but I'm under tier 2 tower, kind of makes me not want to, like, make play. This is one of the weirdest macro setups I've seen, but if they push up enough, I will kill them. They will kill us. Yeah, don't make plays like this, actually. I don't know why I'm doing this to show off to you guys. Don't make plays like that. That was really stupid. That's called... That's called limit testing. That's something you really shouldn't do in Solo Queue, ever. You should never limit test. Unless you want to get better. Like, truthfully, the best way of getting better is limit testing. Because then you can be like, oh, okay, I can do this, I can't do this. Basically, a way of improving your mechanics by just pulling the enemies. Like, be able to, like, go in, get a kill, get out. In a pretty, like, dicey situation where... Could easily die if anyone hits you with anything. Oh, he dies, by the way. I don't know my ult, but I mean, we have TP. We have every way to kill him, so. No point for me not to stay and kill him, right? I got Axiom. I got lost of I got boost. So, mid game. All T1 towers are down. Every objective you can look to fight. I mean, you just make picks, go invade. Make pick, go invade. Make pick, go invade. And now that I have Axiom and Last Whisper, I have enough damage to just one shot anybody. And I just use my ult. Is somebody ult? I just look for people to get cut out. But actually, I always play like that if you want to get good. Yes, but also, I don't want to be the one to tell you because if you int, they're going to come to me and they're going to play me. You know? It's like, I'm telling you to, but I'm also telling you not to, right? Like, if you go into a solo queue game and you wind up 0-20 because I said, you know, make risky plays, that's not my fault. That's your fault. No, it is my fault. You know what I mean? And we got tier 2 tower top. Good. And they're all mid, so I'm going to push. I'm going to look to, like, look for a play in mid. Because you always want to be around where the play is in mid game. My team's all mid. I'll look mid. If they're moving all top, I'm moving top. Nice. Got Ash's flash. 
Why is she so tanky? What the hell? Did she have a random ruby crystal. So, between a low master jung and a child jung. It depends on the player individually, but pretty much everything. Alright, at this stage of the game, I'd like to reset on full items, so I'm gonna get my full item. I don't like the way that she just did that. That's like disrespectful, you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing that for? Ondo takes your advice a little too serious. Good. Good. My job and my, my life choice is to help people climb the better. You guys see what I mean? Where like you want this smooth transition from you're getting all your CS to making plays. It's a good mix. And when you're ahead and when you're able to invade. See, I can't teach you this kind of stuff in high elo like I can in low elo. I can't, you know, I can't bully high elo players who have high elo teammates that'll stop me from all this. But in low elo, you can literally take advantage of every single aspect of every player. And like players are self-aware that players don't know what they're doing and their teammates don't know what they're doing. But that doesn't mean you need, you don't need to know what you're doing, right? Like if you know what you're doing, you can take full control of the game. Like, okay. Something as simple as, okay, if you're ahead and you know where people are in the map, always prioritize invading over farming your own camps. Simple. I'm sure not a lot of people do that. Because if they did, then they'd probably be high elo. All right, we don't have any vision on the Baron. That's actually one of the biggest, oh no, so you can... I forget what elo I'm in. Okay, this is actually really bad. Yeah, Baron, they deserve it. It's my fault. They weren't even on it. What the hell? Yeesh. Not gonna lie to you, I trolled that really hard. Don't know why, I thought Urgot was my teammate. I was like, oh, he's here to help me, and then he just started started beating me up. Well, that's one of my favorite things to do. You go really close with your E, and then you W, and then you Q away. Kind of like a fade away. I'd never seen anyone do this either. Like, when you walk up like this, and you just go like, for a W poke, Q back, like that. Because you can Q in your thing, right? I never see anybody do that. I, I never see other Kane mains do that. I don't know why. Like poking around with your with your thing. Your WQ. You don't even need to be in your E to do it. You can just do it in general. Like just like this. I never see anybody do that. I don't know why. Okay, I have no mana, so I'm gonna back up. Alright, every gen enough mana. Regenerate bonus mana in the river and the jungle, so... Nice. Enough mana to get a combo and get out. Well, Twitch chat, two of you are getting a sub after this game. And I don't plan to make it six. I mean four. Four six. I do that since I watched you? Good, good, good. I never, I, like, I watch other streamers play Kane, like, other, like, Kane mains play, and only, like, Dark Aura does a lot of the stuff that I do. Alright, well, remember I said you choose Opportunity or Serpents at this point? They have shields, so Janna's shield, forgot shield, I got Serpents. And notice how I'm always resetting, after I initially snowball, when I'm this ahead, you always want to reset on full items. Then you can just take all the camps, you can take all the waves, kill them all over and over it's all about mana management and if you struggle with mana management that's where mana mean users come in handy I hear looks a solo erga nice Ow. Oh, GG's. 
Ah, ó, Didis. Didis, Didis.